people are saying there are, there are no specific treatments that do handle it and mortality death rates are, you know are increasing as against what we did expect you know so what's happening at the current we do find therefore that when you look at the stats they are really so high I've mentioned them earlier, the US about 350,000 are dead, in the UK about 45,000 and all. But because of how it is, what has, how has it lo looked like? Hello? Five. Hello? Yeah, go on, sorry. Okay, could you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. It's perfect. Please continue. Uh, Sorry for the, yeah. There are about 5.6 million active cases all over the world at the current. But the good news is that out of these 5.6 currently active cases, 99% of them are in mild condition. They are not serious COVID-19 cases. So, but because of the way we see when people are dying, things have changed from the norm, things okay. have changed rather abnormal, many of us, we don't look at it from the positive angle. We just focus our minds on the deaths, focus our minds on the ravaging infection. But 99% of the currently active 5.6 million cases, which goes down to about 5,578,000, are mild cases of COVID-19. That in its own is a positive news that if we take, if we internalize, can help us have a better outlook and have a better emotional response to among the closed cases, those that have been finalized. Among the closed cases, those that have been finalized, maybe dead and also recovered, 94% of them were recovered and discharged as well. So that's positive news as well. Okay. So with all these things, what are some of the other things that we do hear of on a daily basis? You hear, for example, some weeks back, about two weeks ago, you know, news flash. Less Leicester, the first city in England to have lockdown reimposed. Who? Those in Leicester, I wonder how they felt. Oh God, is this thing not coming to an end? And those in other cities like Wigan, for example, with the focus of this uh, discourse and this group, they say, ah, people may begin to fear, begin to become apprehensive. It's happened in Leicester, a second lockdown. Is there going to be a turn? Is there going to be a Wigan stone? That's would be a thought that can become very worrying and can affect the mental health of people who are residing in Wigan and some other places around the UK. Very recently, within the week, the United States passes 4 million coronavirus cases. Whoa, people begin to fear. We thought the surge was working. But how come 4 million cases again? Sometime ago, you <laughs> hear again, which even was reiterated just yesterday, the virus has come to stay with us. People, some people had a feeling, okay, now I'm going to lock myself indoors, going to maintain social distancing, and hopefully this phase, this whole stuff will pass. Or you begin to hear news like, the virus has come to stay with us. This morning, early hours of this morning, about midnight, what happened again? <laughs> it said, the UK brings back 14-day quarantine for Spain. Lots and lots of people have booked in holidays in Spain. Some have paid flight for flights and they were to travel this morning. They couldn't travel again. You understand? These are all the a bit traumatic for very many of us that can give rise to unsettle our mental state and therefore affect us mentally. Even the effect of quarantining or self-isolation by the world's one of the uh, science and medical most uh, outstanding journal, The Lancet, published uh, you know, a review of the psychological impact of quarantine. So a few months ago, and what did they say? I quote: "Separation from loved ones, the loss of freedom, uncertainty over disease status, and boredom on its own. You know, when you're at home, you're not going out, you're bored, and boredom can, on occasion, create." dramatic effect. And those are a few of the things that we'll look at today. As well, they did also say that suicide has been reported and substantial anger generated. So these are all the things that can happen. What then is the WHO, the World Health Organization definition of mental health? How does it say it? Many of us may have, some of us rather, may have a kind of warped or you know, a bit narrowed down view of what mental health looks, may look like. 
from a field, oh, probably it is when people have got mental health disorders, like they're psychotic, you know, you know, hearing voices and all that. But what does the WHO say? It says, mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual, myself, yourself, is able to realize his or her own abilities. So when we're able to realize our own abilities, that's a good mental health. At a time like this, with all these effects happening, are we able to realize, realize our abilities? We are able to understand that we've got capabilities, but are we able to utilize our capabilities to fulfill the things that we ought to do? These are ways that our mental health can be affected. Another part of the definition of mental health by the WHO is being able to cope with the normal stresses of life. Therefore, working productively and fruitfully and able to make a contribution to his or her community. Able to cope with the normal stresses of life, thereby being able to work productively and fruitfully and make a contribution to his or her community. It doesn't necessarily mean the absence of disease. Therefore, mental health, by what I have talked about, talks about the way we think, the way we behave, and the way we feel. It therefore behooves us that mental health can affect our daily life, our, our relationships, our relationship. in our families, in our workplaces, and even our physical health as well. It includes our abilities as a person, as an individual, to enjoy life, to attain the balance between life activities and the efforts to achieve psychological resilience. That's, that entails what mental health is about, not necessarily just the absence of a mental health disease. So that is what it entails. But in the midst of all this COVID-19 stress, we're locked down, quarantining, quarantining, and all that, kids unable to go to school, maybe we've got plans, we're unable to fulfill them. Depending on our age, some people are shielding, they're not going out at all, they can't even go out to buy stuff from maybe Tesco or any of the supermarkets. It can affect such people, any one of us, so overtly. So many things have changed in, for many people. There are some people that have lost their jobs. Some others, there have been significant changes in the way their jobs are carried out. Some places, they've downsized. Some places, the salaries have gone down. They pay. Some places, able, some people are able to maintain probably their, what they receive monthly from their main primary place of work. But some other workplaces where they normally go to, to get something by the side, they are unable to, either for personal reasons or for reasons that have been put in place by the current restrictions. So with all these, the ability to enjoy life, the ability to make that balance between psychological resilience and enjoyment of life and fulfilling our lives, ambitions and capabilities becomes very, very restricted. And one of the main overt, before I just put a stop here, one of the main uh, overt effects that this arise in this current pandemic, it's been seen, and in pandemics that have happened over the past several years, they've seen that anxiety problems, anxiety symptoms, are by far the largest significant contributor to the mental health body. People become very stressed up. People become very fearful and very anxious because it's a new disease. And it's very overwhelming, and it can cause very severe emotions in both adults and children. As I've mentioned on earlier in the Lancet study, the effect of social distancing as well can make people feel very isolated, lonely, increase levels of stress and anxiety, and make people come down with things that will and can affect their mental health. So stress with anxiety, it's a very significant mental health burden during these times. And it does affect very many people. Many people may not come down overtly with a straight on, straightforward mental health disorder, like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, whatsoever, but they can come down with stress. And some people may not recognize it. In one minute, I will just run down a few of the symptoms that people can have when they are so overtly stressed and anxious. Some of them are excessive fear and worry, excessive fear, worry, and anxiety, that is difficult for them to explain. Excessive fear, worry, and anxiety, you know, that is there. And other people begin, can begin to have headaches that they've not had before. Body pains, non-specific body pains. 
non-specific problems, you know, with the abdomen, you know, churning, you go to the toilet, come back, there's really nothing physical that is responsible for that. Poor sleep habitus, contrary to how they used to have it, good and a nice sleep previously, they are unable to sleep adequately properly. Eating patterns of some people can begin to change because of the stress occasioned by the current pandemic. People begin to have difficulties with concentrating they try to do their job at work, whether they're working from home for just like very many people at the current, or maybe they're in their workplace, they're unable to concentrate all as a result of stress, uh, stress and anxiety that may have come in. Inability to come to decisions as well while working, lack of motivation, angry outbursts, contrary to your normal character at home, begin to yell and shout at your partner without that being your normal way, your normal, should I say, personality, even at your kids for no proper reason, irritability, social withdrawal. You find yourself that you are becoming more withdrawn. The government has talked about social isolation. You are isolated, but beyond the normal required social isolation, you are now becoming socially withdrawn, even from your own family and your significant others. These are some of the things that people begin to experience. Decrease, decrease in libido. It's another sadness that you cannot really explain or pinpoint. Decrease work productivity. There are many more, but I will just stop at this point so that um, the moderator can continue. But just a, a last line before I round up uh, this very session. So in this period of pandemic, as I've said, there are many mental disorders, but the singular most important mental effect of it is it, anxiety it, and anxiety. Anxiety that can affect us and when it does, because of some of these things, this effect of stress I've mentioned in the last one, two minutes, it can begin to impact upon our families, our work and things around us, even about our social relationships. Yeah, I'll stop there for now, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So much content in that I'm trying to take notes down as quickly as possible and um, We've got to the part of the session where I was hoping that people could share their own experiences with um, possibly stress, possibly anxiety, or what things do you think you've done differently since lockdown? And perhaps other people will be able to relate to that, learn and see how you have resolved that on your side. So we've just got a couple of minutes. It'll be lovely to hear about one to two, um, even three stories if we've got time. Then um, we're going to go on to a session where we, um, Awezi will speak on some coping tips um, for the common mental health challenges that can come up at this time. So open up the floor. Please feel free to drop in as and when. Everyone's also quiet. Everything's been perfect during lockdown. You're all doing really well. This is just regular business. <laughs> Can I come in then just to, just to break the, you know? Oh, go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, Doctor. Uh, very, you know, <laughs> interesting uh, coverage of the COVID-19. Um, I think one of the issues for us is to do with fear and lack of trust for, this, for the system. You know, initially when, we st when it all started, I mean, like we heard about, I mean, up to now about the uh, disparity of are people dying more than everyone else and also the issues around the way it's been or the way we have been treated when it comes to with covid i, I take myself for example i've got underlying health issues and um, i did a blood test you know when it all just started for something just my routine blood test and i got a phone call it was, i had the low I was anemic. I had a low, you know, low, low iron marker. Please, 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 your volume. I can't hear you. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. She, sorry. Um, I have, I had, I have um, an underlying health issue, and um, with with my routine blood test, you know, which which I had on my GP surgery, I found out that I had uh, low iron. Now, low iron. It was nothing, nothing life-threatening, you know, but I got a phone call at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning, I got a phone call. Oh, wow. 
you know, from from out of ours GP telling me that I've got this 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 thing, you know, that uh, do I I have to come into the hospital? And I said for low iron, you know, and I said, well, first of all, you're calling me at two a.m. is going to even kill me. Talk less of <laughs> going to the hospital where we are not meant to be going into, you know. But I refused. I just said no, blank, blankly, you know, like it's two a.m. Another another four hours. It would it would be daybreak, you know. I'll wait for the next four hours, and then I'll call my GP. You know, I'll just out out of hours GP, you know. And when I called my GP, my GP didn't even have a clue what was going on. It was the lab that sent the tech um, a fax to out of hours, you know, GPs. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is now to me now that 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 is all that will forever live in my heart in my mind that these guys want to kill me. <laughs> you know, they want me to come into the hospital and infect me with the COVID-19 virus, which was the rumor, which is still the rumor going around saying, as a black person, if you walk in there, you're not gonna walk, come back again, you know? So yeah, so, so trust, that, that trust and, you know, I'm sure they, have, they had good intentions anyway when they called me at 2 a.m., but, but they've, they've got about it the wrong way, you know, with all this fear and everything from our community. You know, that fear, that fear within our community needs to be, the, the, the NHS needs to do a bit of homework on, on how to absolutely, you know, absolutely. How, how to sell how to sell this thing to us, for us to believe that what they're doing, whatever it is they have the good intentions of our people I mean, check, check the police and like you just said, you know, you gotta wear your mask, you gotta wash your hands mask. They don't wear masks. Are they exempt from COVID nineteen? Then you know. So all you know. So all that comes to that that lack of trust. You know, like to say, hey, you know, it's okay for you to say that. How come one section of the society are not wearing masks, and then you are telling us to wear masks? You know, and and also when we go in there, we're going to come back alive. Yeah. So fear, fear. That is so mask. true. It's genuinely, it is a very common one that we have heard. Like it got its wife in my house with my siblings. As well as my as well as my partner not even wanting to participate when we were approached by the um, the office for national statistics they were going around testing people randomly and my husband was like don't even go for the test don't get the family involved i'm, I'm not i'm not willing <laughs> and honestly that's why we didn't participate so I completely echo that point in terms of the fear that has been put out either by just the media or natural ability of black people to scare each other senseless it's um it's had, it's had a wicked it's had a wicked effect so thank you so much for sharing that um wow has anyone else got anything they would like to share with us at all today can i can i oh my mickey please do again anyway um just at the back of what tolu said hi everyone um I just wanted to just add on. I think the one thing that I find that that's quite common amongst us is the fear of not knowing how to protect yourself properly. Because like you said, the misunderstanding, the mis mis messaging of whether or not to wear a mask, when to wear a mask and how to wear a mask and that that can be a bit overwhelming because if you're coming out and you're thinking oh actually black people are susceptible to just catching this thing randomly and you come out and the doctor for example has not got a mask on so uh, is it really as serious as they saying is serious mm -hmm. or you come yeah. out and you go to somewhere where people like me have got a mask and and something else and they're <laughs> very scared and they've got their hand gel everywhere they go and then you think oh my goodness it, this is more serious than thought than what i thought it was yeah. so i think that's what it is the fear of not knowing what exactly is the right way to protect ourselves and our families so i just wanted to echo that at the back of what Tolly said thanks thank you so much thank you so much for for adding to that so we've got a couple more minutes set aside for it. Are there any other experiences that anyone wants to share? They feel maybe yeah. valid. Yeah, hi. Can I Hello. say something? Hello. Hi, it's Sandy. My name is Sandy. 
And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Awuze, for sharing what you shared. It's very, very, very important. I think especially in our African communities, we don't really acknowledge um, the impact of mental health uh, on ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, men do not acknowledge the impact of mental health on, on themselves. So, I mean, for me, the way I coped, um, I have two kids. Um, I kept myself busy, you know, I kept ourselves busy with schoolwork. Um, I had to tell them every morning, you know, it was just as if it was school as normal. So we woke up every, every day at 8.30 until um, 2.30. And, um, you know, we did that from day one until the very last day of the school. For me, it was important to keep the routine because at some point I felt like I was breaking down and keeping that routine with the kids helped me as well as helping them as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that was how I coped. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for taking the time to share. That's marvelous. And I don't know if you saw my clap over there for maintaining routine from the beginning to the end. I was stellar until about, let's say a month to the end of, <laughs> of the term. So it's marvelous to hear, but I completely concur um, having a routine can be so um, can be incredibly fruitful to helping us. But um, um, Awezi is in a much better position to to say what's valid for good mental health care <laughs> than I am. So we've got to the section where um, he's going to be talking about um, coping tips for um, most common of um, a lot of the mental health challenges that can come up during this time. So I'll turn over to him. Again, if you have any questions, please keep them coming, send them through to yeah. the chat, and um, we'll pick that up later, so. I hope we've not lost the <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you very much for those uh, comments. Uh, and I think they are very valid, they're very germane. And there are things that we, we all experience during this uh, time as individuals and at the same time, people around. Uh, I would just want to, before I go directly into talking about maybe a few ways which uh, maybe we can manage to cope a bit. I just want to say, just like uh, Tony said at the outset, I, w without trying to defend, defend the NHS or the government or all, I think what really contributed to all this policy somersault is the fact that it's a novel virus and at the same time they knew they weren't I don't even want to use the word wearing because even up till now they really don't know everything about the virus most of many of the stuff about the virus is still it's still not known so when they just see something they see a significant find they just want to tap on it quickly it's just that the way sometimes they went about it it's not ideal because it can induce, it may be nothing physical, it can induce psychological or emotional trauma, just like Tony said. But one of the things that they discovered in this period was that uh, low iron levels, uh, low iron levels were you know, directly proportional, uh, was a major factor they found in severity of COVID-19. So it's possible that probably in the lab where they did the, the blood test, they saw that the iron levels were low, Instead of waiting maybe to the next morning or a few days later, they just quickly, as a matter of a rush, and contacted you. You know, another thing that they also looked at was zinc, zinc levels and also um, vitamin D levels as well. Like most of the trust at the minute, since March till now, we've been ensuring that uh, they do vitamin D levels for patients. And for those that are low, they are put on vitamin D because that was also something that was found to correlate with uh, increased mortality, especially amongst blacks as well. So, but the way we went about, they went about it was totally absurd and it shouldn't be so. Because for some people, it gave them anxiety. For those who were, who were never normally anxious, while for those who normally have a background and short personality, it, makes, it, it could make their personality wor worse as well. So bearing in mind many of these things that are said, you know, the symptoms people could have, fear, apprehension, levels of anxiety like that, confusion and all that. What are some of the helpful ways that we can cope? One of the first things I would like to say here is one is to know what to do when one is sick. 
And to add to that, because that's uh, NHS recommendation, to add to that is know what to do even if you don't fall sick. That's how we rather put it. Because no one can predict when he or she can take ill. I was sat with my colleague, sat together, we did world rounds, you know, anyway, because of social distancing, we're not sitting just aborting ourselves the way we used to. We sit about two meters apart. We're not allowing patients to come in except the very serious patient because I work in an inpatient setting. You know, taking all those kind of stuff. And suddenly, a few days later, I heard my colleague was down with COVID. It was, and to be candid, between you and me, as at that time, even my own self, I didn't know precisely, that was before the guidelines became more so specific, so open, we knew about them. It was as if it was shrewd in a bit of confusion way back on, you know, not now. And she herself was confused. And that contributed to her levels of anxiety. One is sick, and or where one is concerned about COVID-19. Maybe you having uh, one is having temperature of above 37.8, or you have a friend who is having such, or maybe has a recent onset cough, or has a loss of smell or taste. The good thing, if you go on gov.uk, go on gov.uk. Yeah. yeah, it's very important. Yeah, because some people still think that it's something that is much more far-fetched. Gov.uk and all that to take you to the nearest testing centers, you know, where. Okay, something going on. I think the network is not too friendly today. And at the same time, test kits can be sent. Test kits can be sent to one in their homes as well. Wizzy. Wazy, sorry to interrupt. Could you just repeat? Oh, sorry, I think he's gone again. Yeah, the network is not so friendly. Yeah. To okay, he's back, he's back. Uh, okay, let me... Let me, okay, let, let me stand and move towards. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't know. Okay. And we lost you when you started speaking about going to gov.uk and then you came back at testing centers. Okay. So if you could repeat that, that would be deeply appreciated. Okay, thank you very much, Aisha. Yeah, so knowing what to do when one is sick or even before one falls sick, it's very important because it can help to reduce levels of anxiety. On set, mm -hmm. you know, it helps to reduce your uncertainty about knowing what to do. So when you want to go to UK for those who got internet connection, for, there are some people who may not know how to use the internet. For those who want, they can call 119. Not 111, not 999, 119 that they can call if you've got problems using the internet. So on gov.uk, on the internet, you will be able to access testing centers that are closer to you on gov.uk. Currently, there are at least two or three ways. There could be there are mobile centers one can you know, access, which you can be able to access from uh, the gov.uk side. Then there are also local centers around, uh, around people. Uh, then lastly, Test kits, self-test kits, home test kits can be sent to your address. And usually we do advise, or it is advised, that when people have got symptoms within the first five days, that is when these uh, scenarios, these options can be explore, explored. Once it's on day five, day five, and it's already 3 p.m. and beyond, there would be no need to send a message to be sent test kits. I mean home test kit. It's, it would be unnecessary. Yeah. So know where and how to get treatment that I've talked about. A very important one is, apart in addition to that that I've mentioned, is take very good care of your emotional health. Take good care of your emotional health. Part of the symptoms of anxiety is uh, people eating poorly, not eating as they should, normally. It does happen quite frequently. A few others as well begin to overeat. Yeah. So eat healthy and well-balanced diet about this time. 
This is not the time to be so frustrated and start eating anyhow. Ordering meals, takeaways that you know they're not balanced. No, try to eat healthy diet. Another, it to still under taking care of your body, we should exercise regularly. The government knew what to do it when part of the plan right from day one was social distancing, lockdown measures put in place, and at the same time, you can go around your area, your local area, exercise, walking, you know, exercising around. It is very important to exercise. It helps the flow of blood to the heart. It helps to reduce anxiety as well. Get plenty of sleep, still on that taking care of your body. Sleep has been found, you know, to be very essential to being in a relaxed you know, in a relaxed state and keeping our sanity in court. Avoid unnecessary use of substances, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. They would not be very helpful about this time. Another very important part is connection with others, despite the social distancing. Thank God for our phones. We are appreciative of the fact of our phones or laptops, you know, different areas we can use to connect. Connecting with others is another good way of taking care of our emotional and mental health needs. Share your concerns, don't hide them. Don't hide how you feel. Do you think you may possibly have the virus? Don't hide it from your partner, from your wife, your husband, your water. Don't hide it, share it. When you share it, it helps a lot. That relief, that emotional relief helps a lot in making us calm down. And sometimes we may get advice because when people are keeping things to themselves, they may not seek help if help actually should be needed. But by the time you share it, the information is made plain and they say, okay, let's go for testing and whatever, you know, moving forward from there, things can begin to get better. Maintain healthy relationships with others about this time. Regular phone calls and try to ensure a good support system. For you, it will be beneficial. And for the other people who are locked down, be it your significant others, your colleagues at work or so, give them a phone call. Though you may not be saying, you may not be having regular meetings with some other members of your team, but give them a phone call and to know how they're doing and how things are out with them. Yeah, okay. Another way of taking care of our emotional health about this time and making sure things are well at home and at work and everywhere, we must learn to take breaks for relaxation. Make time to unwind. You know, there is this uh, temptation to spend all your time on your laptop because you're working from home, for example. Even your, your boss, your boss or your line manager may begin to give you much more work than necessary. After all, it's easy just at the click of, uh, of the mouse. Boom, it's come to you. No, 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 no. You've got to be organized. Make time to unwind. The break times you normally have with the, during regular normal work time, make sure you have such breaks. You know, there should be time that when your laptop, for example, your computer makes a noise, makes a beep, you shouldn't go attend to that because that is your relaxation time and your time to unwind. Take time as well to, you know, when you feel anxious, if anxiety comes, take time to meditate. Take deep breaths. You know, deep breath is one very good way of, relax, of relaxing. Try to engage in humorous activity, things that make you, you know, feel happy. You know, humor, sense of humor, it's very important about this time. Don't take things, life, too seriously. Thinking about coronavirus and all the effects, the things that are happening. Don't take life too hard on yourself. Good. Another thing, very important about this period, even though I didn't put it as number two, but it is very important, is take breaks from too much exposure to news. <laughs> too much exposure to news. <laughs> Some people want to check all the news. My wife, for example, I will use her as an example. Um, several weeks ago, she will follow up all the mortalities in the US, all the mortalities in Italy, all the mortalities in Spain, and it was affecting her. She couldn't sleep. Nothing. I told her, I said, sweetheart, I said, Take the, keep this phone away from you. You don't need it. It was after she began to do that, watching, reading, and listening to all those negative, impactful news, that she began to get better. <laughs> so take breaks from too much exposure to news. Don't be an expert in conspiracy theories. 5G is responsible for <laughs> <laughs> Yes, take break, breaks from all these conspiracy theories and all that. Stay informed. Stay informed is another one. 
For example, this morning, just this very morning, they talked about mm -hmm. uh, restrictions or quarantine, new quarantine measures for uh, ent arrivals from Spain, for example. Stay informed so you are, you are not caught in the mix, in the milieu of things that you never planned for. You understand? Stay informed with correct information. The last one I will put here is carefully plan and organize. Have a dad put under pressure. Don't procrastinate or you know, show things because you're working from home or you are just at home, kids are there, you know, and all that. Carefully plan and structure your day. I think, uh, is it Mickey or Sandy when she was talking? One of them mentioned that make a careful plan of everything at work, things involving your work, things involving home. Kids have been home for several months, you understand? Things regarding probably maybe younger kids about their teaching that you're going to teach, make sure it is carefully planned and timetabled. Older kids, make sure you give them a plan as well so that it will be their time to study and not, don't put yourself as a mom or dad under undue or unnecessary pressure, you know. The last one or two things I will mention here, I know some of us will have some other tips which will be very helpful. Connect with your community of faith-based organizations. One of uh, community organizations is this uh, can, you know, very, very impactful. When Bumi mentioned it to me, I was, you know, I was really elated and, uh, you know, very happy about that. Because when people share together, it reduces pressure, it reduces body. Connect with the community of faith-based organizations. Social distancing measures are in place, but you can use Zoom, you can use Microsoft Teams, you can use Skype, so many other media to help ourselves like that. Then lastly, I would say seek help when needed. Even though we mentioned that anxiety, stress-related stuff are the most important uh, issues with mental health at this time, some people can actually come down overtly with depression. Some can break down and even have bipolar. That is beyond mm -hmm. just these measures that we have mentioned. Make sure you contact your GP who will direct you appropriately. Thank you for now. Yeah. <laughs> That is marvelous. That was like a, I was just a firestorm of all the coping tips. So, and Ovo has dutifully written all the tips down the side. I don't know if anyone's been seeing the chat. So she wasn't even asked to do that. She's just done that for us. So thank you so much for your help, Ovo, because you can copy and paste that and keep it for further. Thank you. That's for the, <laughs> for the viewing. Thank you very much, yeah. yeah. Right. And look at that. We're right bang on time. I love it when meetings go to, to plan, you know, honestly. I'm loving it. Right. So this is the time that we've sort of freed up so that direct questions can be asked. Yeah. And um, as it stands, I'm going to open the floor for people in case you have any question is what we sort of um, took the next 15 minutes or so, freed up. So Awezi, as our mental health professional, and, um, can respond to any direct queries you may have um, or support. I've got some myself, but I'll open the floor at first um, to anything that may have cropped up. I haven't actually got anything unless I've missed it because I've got a couple of messages here um, from people. So please come out, ask any questions relating to mental health. Could Probably it will relate to lockdown, um, as that's what we're speaking about. But if it is something that by the side that you think you can get help with here, please feel free to ask. It's not a space of judgment. We're all trying to we're all trying to learn. Again, everyone is so quiet. They're just yeah, me. Can we? <laughs> Maybe I should I, I should start um, and all that. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Ruby. Thank you so much. Um, it's been, you know, such a, a very informative um, session, even for me. I mean, things I've not read before, I, I begin to hear them from you and all that. But, you know, thinking about them, there are really things that there are issues and, you know, there are practicals, like the tips you've given us, I don't think is written. Um, some of them are not written anywhere. Like, you've got, like, things like humor, talk, connect, um, rest. Yeah. I mean, some of us have taken this period as a very serious period, like everything is serious, even with our children. Don't touch that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, and um, you've told us that we can relax and all that. So thank you very much. Um, I don't know if anybody's ready with their questions. Or I, to give it a, you know, I don't want to. I'm, I'm one of the... Yes, I've got a question, questions. please. Okay. 
Um, I was wondering, uh, Dr. I Aweze, thanks so much for the um, for the talk. It's really, really enlightening, and so many things are coming across very, very um, um, sharply, like things that you really, I really need to do and deliberately and intentionally. So thank you very much. But the quick one I wanted to ask is your tips. One of them you said to take care of your emotional health. And then you went on to talk about food, diet, eating right, balanced and healthy diet. So I was wondering, is the relationship with the food we eat uh, and our emotional health? If you can throw more light on that, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, will use a, I will use a very popular uh, saying. <clears throat> A very popular saying from my part of the world where I originated from to explain that briefly. They said, um, a hungry man is an angry man. I don't know if any of us have heard something like that before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It says a hungry man is an angry man. Yeah. So, so in taking part of in taking care of our emotional health, actually, there are some physical things that we need to do. That also helps a lot. There is a there is a very good relationship, very uh, researched and well understood relationship between certain physical things that we do uh, that also affect positively our emotional health. Things like sleep is a physical thing, but at the same time, it helps us to be more emotionally balanced. Food as well, just like I did mention, which uh, uh, Mrs. Orville just mentioned here. When we eat well balanced meals, there is a direct link. Uh, there is a direct link that leads to improvement in our emotion, our emotional response. Uh, response. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, before I go in with my question, is anyone else a question at all relating to it? Okay. Well, I, I have a few questions, um, I'm a few, it's actually a list, but I'll just take one, I'll just take the ones I can take. Um, you know, coming from an African background and all that, why is it that, you know, when, we, when you're talking about anxiety and all that, it's not more of a why, like, um, I, I think you should just throw more, a, a bit more light, if you can, on why anxiety, you said it, but if you could stress it more, why anxiety and stress, you know, why people should take it seriously. Because, you know, from an African um, and maybe Caribbean um, background, you just think anxiety, one of those things, you know, you never really take it seriously. It's only when you see, you know, people really maybe begin to hear voices, hallucinating and things like that, you begin to take it seriously. Um, and I remember you said that, you know, it's one of those things that one should take. Why, could you throw more light on, you know, in a way that, People are really encouraged to really take anxiety seriously. So we share that with them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, they think it's, uh, you know, different cultures respond to different things differently. In pure Western culture, um, they, in pure Western culture, they tend, people generally tend to respond to any changes that they notice in their bodies, be it physical or, or psychological. But in, in African cultures, let me narrow it down to African cultures, yeah. Those things that don't affect us physically so much, they are usually generally downplayed. So if people have got signs of anxiety, for example, uh, like we mentioned about fear, you know, unfounded fear, for example, they're having some kind of headache that they've met the doctor and the doctor says, there's really nothing wrong with you. They, just that level of apprehension. Because a hand is not off, a leg is not fractured, we don't take it seriously. Many times it contributes to reduced performance in our activities, be it at work or in some other things. It leads to loss of man hours. But because as a culture, uh, as nation, as a continent and as a people, we don't. Hello? 
We can hear you. Okay. We don't generally take note of those things. It begins to affect our productivity, which is part of the definition of mental health. Our ability to, to enjoy life, fulfill our abilities, and contribute positively to our community and our environment. But we don't take it seriously. It is a nature that we have grown up with. So what I would just say at the minute is for us as Africans and Caribbeans to begin to understand that the WHO definition of mental health, as we had said, includes in the last paragraph that it is not necessarily the absence of a mental disorder, such as what we know, hearing voices, people are psychotic, you know, people are talking to themselves, talking alone. That alone is not just what mental health entails. But when we begin to have, you know, confused, a bit of confusion, we're a bit not concentrating well, we're a bit being unnecessarily afraid, you know, these symptoms of anxiety that we have mentioned, not sleeping well and all that, we should take, we should begin to make a radical shift, a paradigm shift in our thinking, in our thoughts, in our thinking pattern, that this is as severe as physical illnesses that this as well is as severe as other well-established mental illnesses. I mean, what I mean well-established, I mean the ones we fear the most. Like people are really, really down psychotic. We should begin to see them like that. And early, such as some of these measures of relaxation that we've talked about, or if it gets worse, we take medication early, it can prevent a downhill, a downslope, because Anxiety, more often than not, when it persists, it leads to mood disorders, particularly depression and suicide. Mm. So that's how it can be. So we begin to, we, we should really begin to see it as something serious. As individuals, when we're having any of these symptoms, or our spouses, or our significant others or friends, we should encourage them to give it more serious attention because it can perpetuate and de decline and degenerate rather into something what's up so i think the paradigm shift is the main thing to understand that it's something serious yeah thank you thank you thank you so much for that comprehensive <laughs> answer oh, someone has is not on mute sorry right so um i can see over's got her hand up i don't know if that was from before if that's um, a new question you want to ask it's a new question if it's okay i just Throw the throw it out to everyone else again, just in case anyone is sort of feeling apprehensive. It'll be great to get as diverse a range of questions as possible. It'll be a shame to we've got professionals sort of just here waiting for us, and then you think of your question ten minutes after we've ended the call. So um, yeah, that's just one more call out to anyone who feels like saying anything. Even if the questions are outside the scope of today's discourse, it's fine. Yeah, fantastic. We'll get them to you. So go ahead, Ovo. I don't have any takers at the moment. All right. Thank you very much, Aisha. I was just wondering, it, it looks like the scope of mental health is so wide. And from the, from the context of the WHO definition you just gave us, it looks like everyone is potentially mm, with mental health issue, especially if um, your productivity has dropped and if you are not able to contribute to community as you used to. So I really don't know, where do we draw the line? Thank you very much for that uh, input, yeah. You know, so many things are, are brought to the fore in making definitions. But the, the main thing in that definition is to clarify, uh, so for, for the general public in particular to understand that mental, it is not only when people have mental health disorders, as in mental health disease, that there can be a mental health issue. I think that's the primary thing that definition wanted to clarify. That is why. Then the second thing to address your question directly is that having mental health related issues, which be it not being able to contribute to society and all that. Society there doesn't necessarily mean the society at large, but the every family is a compendium of a larger society. So that's what it means. So it doesn't mean one has a mental health problem, no. If one finds out that there are problems in their ability to think, behave, function in their local environment, in their local family, yes, compared to how they used to be, it means something could be in something could be happening at the minute. So if one has that understanding, for example, let me give an, an, an instance. 
you notice, maybe because of anxiety, for example, one notices that unlike his or her normal behavior, he or she now begins to have angry outbursts. That's not his or her pattern. That's not his or her personality. Begins to get irritable, very edgy over little, little things. Contrary to how he or she used to act before, does this person have a mental health disorder? The answer is no. But could there be issues that can affect the mental health of that person at that point in time? The answer is yes. So it calls to mind for us to begin to have this little understanding. Why am I having this outburst? Why is my sleep pattern suddenly changed? Why is my eating pattern changed? One day may not be a problem, but over, the past, over a few days, you begin to notice changes in all this. Well, we have this definition and understanding of mental health. What it does mean in our mind view, it can begin to help us to quickly make reparations and make amends to make things better. So it doesn't mean those people have mental illness, no, but things that can affect their mental health. That's what is happening at the current. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So these are like triggers. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, I'm standing because my network is pretty bad where I was <laughs> No worries. Sorry, I we appreciate yeah. the commitment to make sure you've got good, you've got good connectivity. <laughs> yeah, right, well, like, yeah. I'll pop my question that you Don't out. fall down. Mental health. <laughs> <laughs> so my question actually was more a one of, um, was more directly related to, uh, I guess, the, African heritage's experience of the mental health system. But in brief, in terms of when is it that you find that you've seen, I don't know if you have actually had any people of African heritage come through the service. service. At what point, just to reiterate, how is it that we currently engage, engage. with the mental health <laughs> service? You mean people of uh, Black and Caribbean heritage, is that what yes. you mean? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a good question uh, because uh, amongst uh, mental health professionals, it is something that is usually discussed. Yeah, because, uh, good. Today we looked at what we generally call anxiety and all that. They are called neurotic disorders. You know, they are called neurotic disorders. For example, you find people, they may be afraid of heights, afraid of, uh, you know, some things, phobias and all that. They are all neuroses. They are not psychotic disorders. It's been found, or generally, both in the UK and Western countries generally, Blacks and people of ethnic minority, they hardly present to hospital, to their GP or for secondary care for issues like that. But when it comes to psychotic disorders, there's no problem with that. Okay. So, right. but for Western culture, that's why I was talking about the paradigm shift. But for people who are predominantly white, people who are predominantly white, once they have problems with relating to maybe anxiety or other form of neurotic disorders, there are very many neurotic disorders, very many. They easily present to, to their GPs for care and they begin to have care, attention and treatment early on compared to uh, the people of Caribbean or black heritage. That is why whenever you say most commonly, not whenever, but most commonly when you say black people of black heritage who come to hospital for issues like this, it must have been there for of a long standing nature mm -hmm. and would have deprived them of very significant social occupational functioning before they yes. present to hospital. So it would have been giving them, it would have been giving them problems at work. Mm -hmm. They are unable to concentrate. They are unable to complete their work. You know, so they maybe they would have had some queries here and there. When they maybe they now have a very good and uh, should I say consent boss, we now could now recommend them and say, why not see your GP? And that's when they present for issues, neurotic disorders like this. So the enlightenment, I think, enlightenment of people of uh, BAME of the BAME community regarding neurotic disorders as such, it's still very, very essential. For straight on or straightforward psychotic disorders, people that may be hearing voices, hallucinating, that's what I mean, or mm -hmm. having abnormal, clearly abnormal thoughts. Yeah, presentation is quite okay. Yeah, compared to this, yeah. The only difference I would say for presentation of straight on psychotic disorders is the fact that 
sometimes as well, instead of coming to present in healthcare settings, they may also prevent, uh, present in maybe some religious settings where they will manage it for, you know, mm-hmm. yes. months yeah. or years we, without we access before they present to hospital. But my recommendation and what is be currently being touted by uh, the NHS, or let me not say NHS, by the Royal College of Psychiatry and Mental Health Professionals as large, is that no one is discriminating or no one is barring you from involving in your uh, religious belief. But then at the same time, why not combine the fact that you're going to your imam as a Muslim, you're going to your pastor as a, as a believer, or for like in my community here where we have loads and loads of Hindus and uh, Buddhists, yeah, get the attention of all those people. But at the same time, combine it with orthodox medical treatment. So that is what we tend to advocate. That is such a fantastic answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Because I think it answered exactly what I was wondering. However, it's led me on to something else that I think will be relevant to know is looking at recovery, considering that we as a people, on average, present quite late into a psychosis. Are you still here? I think you're still here. It's the network. Yes, I'm with you. So, yes, in terms of considering that we ordinarily present quite late, does that directly correlate with how well we recover or do we surprisingly respond well to treatment even though we present quite late? It all depends on, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it's multifactorial. It's Mm -hmm. multifactorial. Yeah, there are basically standard uh, fig- uh, standard uh, research figures that shows the rate of response to treatment. Yeah, but the one that I will just hammer on generally, directly, that is different, that is generally more or less like different to the others, it's what we call schizophrenia. Uh, yeah, because the the schizophrenia it's a it's a chronic mental disorder generally. Uh, And one of the things that uh, affects the prognosis, that is the possible outcome, is the onset at presentation. Yeah. So when there is delayed presentation, it adversely affects a positive outcome. That's what I would say. By and large, it's best to present early. So when people present late, when people present late, definitely it, it would affect... It, it, it will affect the, a, a few things, really. How would I put Schizophrenia, as I mentioned, yeah, fine. Yeah. If they don't present early, it's more of a problem. But for other mental illness, when they take maybe medication or other forms of treatment, it will be good. But by and large, they would have lost quite a lot before yeah. presenting because they presented late and maybe in their homes, uh, in their home environment, in their work environment, so many things would already have been, you know, been let down yeah Yeah. thank you so much for that clarification i was hoping you were going to say something like oh black people present late but they respond so well and they get to it and they always get better and they don't have Uh, (laughs) not so lucky yeah we're doing so well that special (laughs) magic one no (laughs) but yeah thank you so much for being so comprehensive honestly i'm so grateful for your time today um what i do want to say is though i did say in the last 10 minutes that we were just going to say something on the topic of self-care because it is the summer holidays now and um because obviously things have been a bit skew if have been a bit different in comparison to regular years summer plans have been a bit blown up and um i'm personally quite aware and i know that bumi has mentioned this um to me previously that our community specifically aren't very good at relaxing and giving themselves a break you know, like my sister's well known for on her birthday she'll say something like oh i'll just go do a night shift i don't have anything else to do you know mm-hmm. and it's sort of that kind of thing so i was just going to spend literally just a handful of minutes because i know we've got 10 minutes it's about 10 minutes left in our time in terms of i was going to have people just share quick tips and ideas i've got some myself in terms of what you're doing to maximize your summer time you deserve enjoyment you deserve be free you deserve not to have sort of mental anguish despite lockdown you see we've got the we've got the we've got the background of lockdown right now and on my side for people who have kids i just wanted to throw it out there local to wigan wigan youth zone is back open 
it's accepting people, although they're in bubbles and you can only do about two days a week, that possibility is there. And I know um, that there are a handful of sort of like summer schools that open up uh, on a part-time basis um, at the moment. So I just want to throw that out there that I'm just saying, Summer, what are you doing? Have you got any plans at all, <laughs> anybody, for this summer before we close the rest of this phone call? Well, Zoom call, sorry. Aisha, please, can I say something very briefly? Not right, as brief one. as possible, because we've got about eight minutes. I'm really conscious of time. All right, I think I'll let it go. Right. Okay, then. Have you got plans for summer? Have you got anything that you can share with us? What are people doing? I think Mary's hand is up. Maybe we'll give Mary. Yes. Yeah. Mary? Hello. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. So I have plans uh, and I've decided to um, go away um, tomorrow for, uh, from tomorrow to Friday and um, going to the caravan, which we do nearly every year and the kids absolutely love. So they always ask, are we going to the caravan? Are we going to the caravan? Which is fine to do, which is amazing. The problem is I will end up going on my own with all the three kids. <laughs> so <laughs> the mental health talk, even though you're trying to do something where your mental health is going to be good, if you're going on your own with, <laughs> with that, because your partner doesn't want to go, then you end up back in the mental health of <laughs> not relaxing because you've ended up taking the kids from one place to another place and all you want to do is just let the kids have fun so you put the kids first and the caravan mm -hmm. is good because you want ideas of what you can do so we're going to the caravan somewhere else and they'll have like a uh, water park and everything there and have fun but it's yeah. just for the kids not for <laughs> my kind of mental health <laughs> so i'm sorry I'm just so waiting. I guess there is an action for you to take there to find something that you can do just for yourself somehow <laughs> this summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, which caravan site are you going to? I'm going to Great Yarmouth, so I'm going a bit far. <laughs> right. <laughs> but there are different ones. The reason why I picked that one is because some of the other sites, they're not opening up all their facilities. Right. Only the England ones are opening up the facilities. Wales, Scotland and stuff have decided that they don't want to. Um, they're still in lockdown type of thing, whereas England has opened it up. So if you look for things like that, you need to look at the England one um, and try and read the things. If you want to go to North Wales, which is closer, you have to look at what facilities is open. You need to be careful, but there are great things that you can do. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we've got caravans, in England, if you want a lot more facilities, yeah. and um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And, and I've got a message from well. hello. I said she go with face mask as well. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that was that's part of the fun. <laughs> We've got a wonderful message here from um, Paula, who said walks are free and cheap, and takes the kids. And you can take the kids, and you can make a day of it. So um, that's something to bear in mind. Um, sometimes you don't have to do something as much as going far away to enjoy the summer and do something good for your physical, mental health. Has anyone else got something to drop in? Um, I just just a quick one. Okay, sorry, Mickey. Just a quick one, then, because my um, just to sum up. I'm not summing up everything, but it's like what um, breaks and holiday has a big impact on our mental health. I just want, which is not common with the African, Africans especially, we don't take time off. I mean, now we're talking about mental health. Summer is here. I think we should all start making plans. It does have a big uh, positive effect on our mental health. And I'm sure um, Mawose can may, may support me, you know, with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> yeah. So, Mickey, what are you doing? Right, so I think I'm, I'm more or less a cheapskate. Those that know me know that everything I do starts with the free ones first. <laughs> so what we do, we do loads of parks. If we, we use an app called Trail Finder and we use National Trust. So these are places where a majority of the time are free. I know National Trust, you have to pay for some of their entries if you've not got a membership. But if you look online or look on Facebook for your local parks, um, local trails, 
local walks. There's loads, especially around Wigan. I think a lot of people don't, a lot of our people don't invest their time to finding out. We set off sometimes around seven in the morning. I know not everybody's for early, but we don't get back till about eight in the evening. We pack a picnic, by the way. And this is mainly because you've got places like Rivington that you can go to. You've got um, the hills. You've got the seaside. We've got amazing seasides within an hour's drive. So for those that are local and that are not looking to spend too much money, just invest in a cooler bag, a backpack that you literally just fill in with iced water, drinks, yogurt, everything. I literally spend as close to nothing. If I spend money, it might be spending money to get in the place. Like if we went to a national yeah, task, yeah. I would have either paid for entrance, but I'll make sure we do sandwiches from home, which the kids take part in. So it's some of their choices of what they would like to pack. So I'm not stuck with 10 peanut butter sandwiches and the kids are still screaming hungry. <laughs> and then take outdoor activities, Poundland. I mean, I'm, I'm Poundland. There's loads of, <laughs> loads of ideas there for us already. of outdoor activities. Family, I mean, they too play games. They're single game plays. So by the time you go through the walk itself, the games that you've brought in, have a picnic. When you get home, the kids are zonked out. And while they're doing all of these, the work, the walk within its own self is part of your mental well-being as well. Yeah. Um, the games that you're playing part of, for some of us that don't gym, part of exercise, you will know it the <laughs> next morning. Um, yeah, so that's So me. that's fantastic. Everything local, so that's that, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. So, so far we've got a wide range of things already and not they're not all that costly and they're quite accessible. They're here within our reach. I feel a lot of the time as a community, we can feel as though things for enjoyment or things to do that are interesting or exciting are either expensive or complicated or it's not for us or I have more important things to do. So what I would say is we're getting close to that time. And I just yeah. want to wrap up quite quite nicely. It's been so fantastic, yeah. honestly. I can see I, that it's going to be a thriving, fruitful community. For those who are shy, <laughs> who haven't I, uh, spoken, sorry, um, we have something for I'm us. I'm re really sorry to interrupt and all that. Um, if we've got maybe like a minute or two more, I don't know if we can um, take over um, before you wrap up. With, do you think that's okay? Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. I thought she said she wasn't going to have enough time before. Yeah. Um, what do you want to still contribute? Oh, that's fine. Is all right. No, what I was what I was going to say isn't connected to the next um this summer I issue. So I I wanted to um say it in relation to what uh, Dr. Awezi said earlier. So I think I'm good. We can go on, please. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Aisha. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Yeah. She wants to carry on. Yeah. Quick. <laughs> and just quickly add, quickly, sorry, Aisha. Um, yes. Just for the sake of everybody else, if we have any um, questions or contributions that we'd like to add, especially given the fact that we're working within a time frame, sometimes mm -hmm. it might just be easier. If we don't get to share what we'd like to share on the platform, let's make use of the WhatsApp group. Post your messages on there, post your questions on there, post your big ups or whatever on there, that if it's not included within this time frame that we have, we can still address and attend to it off of the time so that nobody gets cut off or nobody gets given anything, <laughs> just so everybody feels included. Is that all right with everybody? Sorry. So, yeah, so in sort of like summary to that, um, I don't know if everyone's seen it in the chat box. I've just put a little link there, it's literally, bit, or well, ly forward slash Khan it's called Wigan. You should be able to copy and paste it or write it somewhere. Just a little contact form I've put on there for you to put your name, email, number, any feedback, any questions. We want to make this as useful for everyone as possible. So please do get onto it because I know it's a bit difficult because everyone's getting information several different avenues and several different people and um we want to make this as useful and as practicable as possible 
So please join us right now. We've only got the, we've got the Khan Greater Manchester Facebook group. So you can get to us on that. We haven't got a general WhatsApp group for everyone that is a member of Khan Wigan. But, um, it's something that we're working towards and we'll keep everyone informed on that. And um, <clears throat> sorry, I thought someone was about to say something. <laughs> so just to end it all, we'll definitely improve with time. I am pleased that this has gone so well and there's been so much information shared. Um, and I just wanted to say four little calls to action just to make sure we leave here, leave here with something that, um, that is practical, that we can just do. One is definitely practice self-care, keeping the coping skills that have been shared today in mind. Some of them are as simple as eating well, and some of them involve some bravery and speaking wholeheartedly to the people around you about things that may be worrying you. Secondly, make plans for the summer. You absolutely deserve it. Even if it's just a weekend this summer, proactively say, all I'm doing this weekend is caring for myself. I know it's easier said than done, considering that people have jobs and children and things in life, but it's, it's, it will just be so good for you. And it's important that you know that two months down the line, you'll realize that you could have given yourself that weekend, could have done it. So definitely make plans, any plans for yourself for the summer. Please leave your feedback. You can leave it on the Facebook group. It's just C-A-H-N, Greater Manchester. If you search for that on Facebook, you will find us. And um, you can fill out the form, as I've mentioned, that's in the, in the chat section. Um, that would be marvellous to get anything because you want this to be thriving. And um, yeah, the last thing was, again, fill out our contact form because I really, really want you to fill out the contact form so we can get in touch with you. Um, I appreciate your time today. Um, that is all that I have. It's 5.23 on Sunday. But I think Hello. I just heard someone. I just heard someone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. I know I'm not. I'm going to make everyone laugh. This is this is me, um, because um, basically, I'm from Africa originally, and I know what happens in Africa. Um, they promised us some packaging last time we had this. Um, so I'm wondering, oh, Bumi has not collected it and then uh, tried to be like our African leaders. <laughs> I think she has. We're trying to resolve the situation with her, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, so, we, we'll have that in mind. Well, at least now you've made it open. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know whether you're one of these our African leaders and you've made it your palliative COVID, uh, COVID uh, collection. So we are still waiting for it. Okay. We're taking that on board. I think one of the directors is here. So <laughs> she, <laughs> okay. she knows they have not collected anything, but we'll yeah. get back to you. Thank you. Okay, then. It's been marvelous. I wish you all a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful week. Well, the remainder of your weekend and a wonderful week ahead. We will get in touch oh, about future events. We've got loads of ideas as to how this can be awesome for everyone. So again, get in touch, leave feedback, and we look forward to seeing you at the next event. Yeah, I, yeah, and appreciation to Dr. Rose. We thank you so much. It was short notice. Um, I'm sure we'd like to have you in the bigger forum. Um, I know that hopefully you will oblige, but thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your time and for all the contribution. Thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> Aisha, thank you. Yeah. Take care.